but it was in my childhood days. Now with the spirit, now I'm my savior. I was filled, not filled, oh, in that old fashioned meeting. first daughter was mentally challenged. She passed away at the age of two. We were really in trouble because we were just young when we had her first, the first girl. And um, she was in the hospital all the time. And on a Sunday, we had a strange vehicle. We were on the farm and came into the yard and asked us if we were Demerses, and I said yes. He says, well, we're the accountants from the general hospital and we could no longer keep your daughter because the bill is getting higher and it's not the place for her. So the, uh, we went to the, the guidance clinic and we to get some help and they said, well, if your child was blind, you'd have to take her home. Well, no, it's impossible. They didn't understand the, the complication. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was hydrocephalic, her water on the brain. His head is enlarged by increased pressure of spinal fluid. And spina bifida. She lived in a sanatorium in Calgary, in Red Deer and Calgary for two years. We never brought her home. I don't think she ever knew us. She just looked at the wall and that was it. You know? yeah.
The child must not be abandoned, not by parents and not by staff. That is the main philosophy in this home. first first thing that she really enjoyed she never enjoyed it all mm. but the first one she ever took to was Rag uh, Raggedy Andy and she had a Raggedy Andy for years and years and years and years mm. uh, and to the point where I'd make him because you know she'd go through one a year yeah. she'd <laughs> hug it and kiss it and shake it so much that it was in rather at the end of the year so I'd make her a new one yeah. did that kind of help her with communicating, would you say, growing up? A lot, when yeah. she was little. And, and Diane has a very high pain tolerance, so she never mm. complains. So when she was a baby, she had a lot of earaches that I didn't know about because she never cried. Diane has never, never cried. So by the time I noticed that she had an, an earache, I could smell it. So oh. by then it was an infection. Mm. And when I would put her to bed in the afternoon when she was little, uh, she talked to her Raggedy Andy and she'd tell him, do you have a headache or do you have a tummy ache? I knew that's what she had. That's how we, uh, you know, communicated with her. This day she still, she still loves him, yeah. She gets up in the night and she goes to the bathroom and she talks to her guy. She says, don't worry, I'll be right back. She's, she's a very, uh, she knows how to be loved by others. Yeah, and you know, she she doesn't understand, like, uh, with her brother, younger brother and older sister, we never had any fighting in the house between ch siblings. Mm -hmm. You know, siblings usually you have little, <laughs> but with them we never did because Diane didn't know how to fight back. She never mm -hmm. did. They, even with the younger brother, she they were the best of pals. And another thing with Diane that we found out as she was growing growing up, when she was little, you know, and could talk, she started walking and talking at three years old. Mm -hmm. And she really progressed really good. And what we found out is was not be negative with her. Like if we were going to a place, Riel and I, you know, from, uh, an outing, and she'd say, can I go? If we told her, well, no, you can't come, that was an insult. Like she mm -hmm. would get upset. But we'd say, well, you know, Diane, this is just for adults. And she was fine. She understood what adults were. Yeah. But when she got to be an adult, then we had to make a change because I couldn't say for adults. Yeah. I'd say, well, you know, Diane, this is for married couples. <laughs> so. But at the time, it was easy to get them sterilized. There was no questions, you know, like... And the thing is, with Diane, too, um, you know, she, she didn't understand all that. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, like, how would she make the decision like that, you know? And was that a difficult decision to make? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, very difficult, because then you're, you're deciding for her, uh, mm -hmm. and you want to do what's best, naturally. Uh, Whenever we talked to our priest about it, it was the same for Blandine. Hmm. You uh, follow your doctor's instructions. Hmm. And that was it. And he was of the same religion as we are. Hmm. That's and, fascinating. And, yeah. and to be able to adopt, mm -hmm. we had Blandine had to go herself to get partial um, birth, hysterectomy, yeah. partial hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. and this way that cleared the, the paper because. They didn't want to give children to people that are still capable of having children. And the thing is, too, that there's been so many changes, mm -hmm. you know, from the time Diane was a teenager to today there, you can look at all the changes that have happened, you know, so. Does seeing the changes like make you hopeful for the future of childcare for disabled children? Oh, I think yeah. so. There's, a, there's, a lot, there's always new things that come out mm -hmm. to make things easier. Yeah. But as we sit now, we've come a long ways. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's um, people that keep a child that, like that at home and refuse mm -hmm. to send them to 
an association or something like that because they don't want to lose their tie. Mm -hmm. It's preventing that person from development mm -hmm. because they have the tools today to to get in just about in the brain of the person and see if we can accelerate on this area because mm -hmm. like for Diane for memory. Her memory is good for certain things so mm -hmm. let them strive in that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we found that once we, uh, the people knew her, and and they were, we would go out with her and stuff like that, and mm -hmm. she always got preference. We didn't ask for that. Yeah. But people were so surprised to see her progress that, you know, they they were really interested in her. You know. Mm -hmm. They're just like kids, you know. Yeah. They don't think of what what should I do, what should I not do. We, it just comes naturally and they each have their own little thing that they're good at, you know. Yeah. Like you and I, yeah. We're good at some things, not so good as others. I guess it's the same for them. But we, with these girls that we have, you know, mm -hmm. they're happy when you do something for them, but they, they don't ask for much at all. And but it's by sitting, medical people sitting together and even the religious people sitting together and uh, making a choice that is possible, that's nice, mm -hmm. and it improves their life. If you were in a similar position today, with all these supports in place, do you think you would make a, a similar decision to still have her sterilized? Let a little 